What up, everybody? How are we going? Hey, Isha. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? So nice to see you. Hello, everybody in the chat. Um, there's a bunch of people who are already here that I just want to say hello to. We have uh, Mar uh, Marlis, uh, Kenzie, Innes, Mecca, Aaron's here as per usual, um, Britt, Steph. Then. Franz, um, who else do we have? Asia is here, Gab's here, uh, Kenzie, did I say Kenzie? Uh, um, go to the regular crew, which is amazing. So lovely to see everybody here and I'm um, so stoked that uh, Asia could be here with us tonight. Uh, we met a little while ago, didn't we? I think we, we kind of yeah. um, knew of each other via Twitter and mm -hmm. uh Tiogan's here as well so nice to see you here and um thanks to the new followers i saw a bunch just um jump in before as well so uh yeah we kind of found out about each other's work via twitter and um then we got to meet uh while i was touring with rule in london which was super cool and have a amazing yeah, you took me good. to some great restaurant where we ate amazing food from high place in brixton <laughs> yeah yeah it was so good oh, <laughs> I think that was mm -hmm. one of my favorite parts of touring was um, being able to meet people such as yourself and Maggie, who I'm going to be speaking about both of you in a sec. Um, there was a bunch yeah. of photographers that I got to meet while I was on tour, which was so cool. Um, and who, uh, Colleen's here as well. Nice to see you, Colleen. How are you? How is everyone feeling? My God, what a weird time. Yes, very, how are you, very, very weird time. How, sure. how are you feeling? Ish, what's what's um what's the general vibe? Um, I don't know. It just it feels so weird. Like the past week has just been kind of like a blur to me. It's just been like like feeling guilty for not being on social media, but then feeling guilty for being on social media and like trying to keep up with everything and not missing things. And it's been very overwhelming. But in a way, I thrive off like being put under pressure and being put in like situations where it's like you have to do this, this, and this. And I've just been like constantly like on my laptop creating assets um and it's been so much fun because i'm not working like as a photographer i've got no work so it's nice to get into a project and put in all your energy yeah we were just saying that kind of um before i went live but um you i mean we all haven't been shooting i only just started shooting as of last week but we haven't been able to work which is a really weird feeling and i I feel like we're very similar in personality in that like where we keep ourselves very, very busy. So when that is taken away, yeah. it's like, that's basically why I started streaming because I had nothing to do with all of yeah. this energy. And it feels like this is what you have done now, um, especially in the last couple of days to put this collective mm -hmm. together. So I wanted to, um, I really wanted to get into this straight away. There's, um, and yeah. what you've been working on and, and what you've been working on with Maggie to explain to everybody. Do you, I'll let you just do all the explaining. Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. So during this time, um, I've kind of just thought about ways in which like I can help personally, but then also I thought about it as like every little help. So if everybody kind of gets involved, we can collectively make something that will be a bigger impact because not everybody has a big platform, but if we create a platform for these people, then it will just give them the impact. So what we've kind of done is um, me from the US, sorry, me from the UK, <laughs> Maggie from the US, have kind of teamed up to launch um, a joint kind of hub where it is just called Black Lives Matter Photo Collective. Um, we don't want to brand it. It's not about us. It's just about them. Um, and we're just basically asking photographers from across the world to donate one photo and I will handle the UK shipping, Maggie will handle the US. Um, I'm also doing international because it's cheaper for me and it's just a way that we're going to get people to donate money um, to, you know, all Black Lives Matter causes. We've decided to actually go with a split donation. There's a website that would be on our website um, and it's just basically saying that it's all the profits will basically be donated to various Black Lives Matter charities, organisations, because we had a look at, we were going to originally do um, Black Visions Collective, and they reached out to us and said, look, we've got so much money, please donate to someone else. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of want to make sure it's going to the right person. So that is basically um, Black Lives Matter Photo Collective in a nutshell. 
it's insane. We've had like over 200 emails, over 100 prints being sent, um, over 100 photographers, and all of the money um, is going to be donated to all of these charities, which I'm just really, really psyched about. Um, it's been insane to like, you know, get all these photos up. And it's also really cool because I found new photographers through it, you know, and seeing people's work and music photographers and in landscape photos. And it's like, you get to see a different side of people as well. Oh, that's so uh, good. But then, yeah, it's really cool. And then on the back of that, um, I also thought that's cool for the photo collective, but I feel very passionately about the UK. Um, and the UK obviously is no different to the US. Like we still have a lot of, you know, murders by the police and police brutality, if you want to call it that. Um, and a lot of racism here, it's just like more undercovered. So um, I have a platform that is joint with several creatives called Platform London and we basically started two years ago and we're all about and we've always have been about empowering people the whole team is people of colour um, the whole team is black except for me and Navi are two Asians so we're all like created by people who are trying to help people like us because we've never really seen people like us in you know mainstream media so Platform London is a separate site yeah I've got that up at the moment that one that one I'm just showing um, and I do. yeah so yeah so this one is open to all creatives so we kind of wanted to just target everybody and a lot of people that submitted are like graphic designers or illustrators and it's really nice because we get to donate 50% of profit to the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust which if you know if you from the UK it's just you know you just got shot by the police for no reason it's just a really horrible story and we kind of want to donate to something close to home but then also we are aware of our privilege and what's happening in America so we're donating the other 50% of profit to the Know Your Rights campaign um, just because we feel like a lot of education is important and a lot of people don't know your rights and I think it's the most basic thing that every American or every human needs to know so we're hoping that by donating you know 50 to US 50 to UK we're kind of getting even spread with platform um, and also with Platform London, because our audience is mainly um, people of colour, a lot of black people, a lot of the artwork is coming from them. So it is, to me, a bit more personal with this project. Yeah. And we're, lim we're limiting this one to 50 because we don't want an influx of so many products that it gets lost. Yeah, there's a few people in the chat um, really blown away by this initiative. I think uh, you really need to be commended, I guess. Um, just for being so... I don't think I do, though. Well, I know, but I know, I, think... I know what you're going to say, but somebody needs to step up mm -hmm. in these moments. I know you're going to be like, yeah. you know, you're yeah. a very humble person and I know that you're, you don't want to make it about you, but there does need to be some organisation in these instances. Um, and the fact that you yeah. just, you uh, stepped up and, um, you know, brought everyone together. Like, it's really about community and bringing yeah. everyone together and really wanting to help. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think that's the main thing because when I tweeted it, I literally tweeted it like not knowing who would respond. And then Maggie replied and I was like, okay, she's in the US, this would be good. And I've never like worked with her on a project, but we work so well together in the sense of like, I'll say something and she'll say it. And then we're, we're thinking alike. Um, we haven't had any disagreements. And if we have, we kind of squash it. Like you have to work with somebody also that is like A, dedicated, like she spent hours, like the time zone difference is five hours and she's up and I'm in bed and she's still working and I'm asleep and it's really, really good. And I'm so glad that I'm working with her because I think she's the right person to actually get this together. Like no bullshit, just let's do this. Um, and also we have to obviously shout out um, Adele Seiki from New York has actually made our host website. So because we have two websites for the UK and US, Adele is a coder. She's an amazing photographer as well, obviously. But she has made a host website that is basically going to be our main website. And you click on the link and you can have all the info to the US site and the UK site. So shout out to her for that. That's the BML um, Collective one. That's that, that's that hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah Black Lives so Matter that's, Photo Collective. That's the one that's not live yet, but that's going live at some stage yeah. today. I've just got that up on the screen yeah. at the moment. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this one isn't it isn't live because we we still have submissions like today i opened my emails and we have submissions and we just want to make sure that we're do, everybody who sent it the photo we're going to upload like we just want to make sure it's fair and even um, and we're not cutting anybody off and everybody has an equal chance 
Um, so that's why we're waiting till tonight. So for the Black Lives Matter Photo Collective, if you want to know the time for launching, um, 8 p.m. UK time, so that's BST, um, 12 p.m. Pacific time, so I believe that's like the West Coast. Yes. And then I think it's 5 p.m. for like um, EST, so like the East Coast. I'm not sure about these American times. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but yeah, right. and obviously for you guys in Australia, it's going to be probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. It's Thursday night. Yeah, it's quite late. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then just one more person to shout out for this. Um, we have Junior Rod. Oh God, what's his last name? Junior Gonzalez, I believe. Please, if I'm butchering your name, you know, I'm sorry. And he's just come up with the logo and he's come up with all the assets. So he's made like over 130 assets. Oh, wow. So all of you guys can promote your work because we want to make sure that while everybody who's involved can promote their photos, we have um, the information attached to the asset. So it's not like about you. It's about like all of these donations are going to go to this charity. So every time you see the photo, you'll know that. Um, and like I say, I don't think we need to be congratulated because this is the bare minimum we can do. But at the same time, I feel like we should have got a bigger team involved because... <laughs> it's so much work that's i mean that's i think because i know i've been involved in really big projects so the reason that i i do think you should be commended because i i absolutely know how much work that is and you've done it in just a few days uh with the the team of people mm. um so yeah. it does it does take commitment it's really great that you said that about maggie and and i assume all of the, the people involved um you do need real dedication in those times and you need people that commit and don't like go disappearing or whatever it's like there it's it's hard to explain if you've never done a project like this but it's just like all hands on deck work yeah. across the, the you know around the clock um to get something up and running like this but it is a really really worthwhile cause and i'm really stoked that you did it there's um gab was in the chat mentioning that she's really stoked to have an image included yeah um, oh my god so stoked as well yes i'm also stoked to have an image included um there's a few i definitely i know we love jewels we couldn't pick we were like can we put them all in i said in a bunch because i was like but... i don't know what is most appropriate so i was like you guys pick so <laughs> Oh, we, we, I think we picked the right one. Okay. I think it, it looks good on the home Great. Page, definitely. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, I mean, like, in these situations, I feel like um, artists especially, is like we, we just want to help, you know. It's not about us. It's whatever we can do um, to yeah. help the situation. And I really feel like you guys have just, uh, A, the concept and then bringing so many people together, you really do need to be commended. Yeah. So you're awesome. And you can take Thank you, yeah. <laughs> But um. Uh, so I've posted the link um, in the chat so people can just, just keep checking yeah. that over the next 24 hours. It'll be up really soon. Yeah. Um, but I do, uh, I would do really want to let our people know about you and uh, what an amazing mm -hmm. photographer you are. So um, I'm actually going to pull up, uh, I'll pull up your website and we can go through Oh, okay. um, some, um, I haven't updated oh. this in a bit, but we'll just go through Yeah, it. that's what everybody it's says like, uh, when I get them on here. They're like, oh, I haven't updated it yet, but it's totally fine. Um, so, okay, amazing. Okay, we're just going to be on the main page, so. Um, yeah, I think the main page is like... Yeah, I'm just going to scroll through um, some of your work, but um, do you, do you want to give a bit of a... Um, background into how you got into music photography so um you know just for to give you a bit of background pretty much everyone that is here watching um are either currently working music photographers or aspiring music photographers or want to be doing what you're doing basically so as you know all of our journeys are so different because there's no like yeah. one way to get into this so it's always really interesting to hear the backstory you know yeah, okay. So for me, music photography, it sounds so cliche, but it was something I kind of fell into. I know, I hate that. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. But like, so basically, I didn't know what I was going to do in life. This was when I was in like um, sixth form, so I was about 16. And then somebody literally tweeted, you can study music journalism. I swear to God, I went to uni because somebody tweeted that. I used to be obsessed with like Kerrang and Roxanne into rock. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a music journalist. So I literally went to uni because of that tweet 
um, which is insane. And then from that, I was obviously writing about music. I was doing journalism. So journalism obviously involves photos, videos, multimedia. Mm. And it was kind of organic how we could rent out cameras so I didn't have to pay for anything because I, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. Like, I don't come from like a wealthy background. So like I never was owning a camera for like three, three, four years, just renting it out from uni. Wow. All this like high tech gear. That's so cool. Yeah, so it's, it's it really great nice. to hear that uh, though because I think people worry about gear mm-hmm. at the start. Like people are really oh, caught up in if it. I'm being, yeah. yeah. If I'm being honest, like if you have the means by a university or college to rent out gear, like just become friends with the staff. Um, they kind of let you know take out stuff you're not meant to. <laughs> but it's really good to just build relationships with people who can help you um, in a like legitimate way. So I think do not worry about gear. I think I was shooting on a 70D, so a Canon 70D, which is not classed as a professional camera. Mm-hmm. And I was shooting on that for a good four mm-hmm. years and a good year into my full-time um freelance career which i'll explain a bit yeah so yeah i was just shooting like you know gigs to go along with the reviews and then second year of uni i was about 19 i just got sick of like writing and i was like i just want to take photos so then i started more on the photo side and then created like a magazine with some friends that was just collective of creatives and then honestly from there i kind of like took a break because i had to like dedicate my time to uni and then during that break I got approached by like a label and I realized like okay wait I can make money from taking photos of musicians so from that I really have to obviously give give credit to Jack Garrett because he was the first artist the first person who a paid me who recognized me and created my career it was a kind of a snowball effect from there so I shot his gig for press and then not for anybody for my magazine and then he just contacted me and he he actually bothered to email me which you know people don't and he was like look i love your photos Um, i love your work ethic please come to the show tomorrow i want to meet you so i just traveled to brighton from southampton and i met him and the most humbling person to meet for my first experience backstage aaa it was amazing like such a lovely person i introduced him to his fiance at the time who's now his wife Um, and everything about it just felt so safe and amazing and literally from there we kept in touch his label at the time interscope reached out um and that's when i started realizing okay i can make money off this Mm. and you know there was a bit of this kind of feel of oh i don't want to be a beg i don't want to like reach out to people but i didn't hear from the label in like a few months and i was gonna reach out um and then they just started emailing me and they're like do you want to take photos for us in the uk and this is how much you'll get paid and this is what you have to do and that was like again a real experience for me because I've never like freelanced with somebody and that was in 20 I want to say 2016 maybe 2017 and I've I still freelance for them to this day so I would say a massive shout to Interscope because they are a the first big company who have paid me and a lot of people Um, and I recently went to their office in January in LA and just had a chat with them and got to meet the faces that I've been emailing Mm. for like four years and I think it's a it's a lot of cases for a lot of photographers um, that get hired by Interscope and they're the first people that pay them and pay them well. Like, they pay your worth and, you know, they always ask how much you charge. Um, and I think it's just really great. So really from there, I only really started taking it seriously when I figured out I could make it into a business because for me especially, I couldn't do a creative job that wasn't going to earn money from, you know, coming from an Asian household. You know, everyone's like, <laughs> My, my cousins are studying like you know Spanish law business my other cousin is studying medicine like nobody is creative at all and I think for me I couldn't like disrespect that and just like take on a creative job that doesn't take so I think I've just used that driving factor in my work and kind of like taken it on but made sure that it's a business and it's not just a hobby. Yeah. I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid good. Yeah, that's awesome. So, just think- um, just a quick shout out to Bethan who just joined the chat. Thank you so much for the follow. Really appreciate it. Hey, girl. Uh, there's so many lovely comments that are coming through about your work, which is really awesome. Um, uh, there was a really great one before. I've just got to try and find it. Uh, lots of wows, lots of very aspiring, um, so talented. These photos are beyond beautiful. Uh, I love this comment from Aaron because I really agree with it. But very unique editing style and phenomenal presentation on the website as well. You do have a really, oh, a really beautifully unique editing style. I think um, 
there's there's a lot of design elements I've noticed with your editing. Do you have like a design background? Like, did you how did you learn? Mm-hmm. Did you learn Photoshop or like? There's a real um, there's a real skill to what you do. It's not just like you know you've just yeah. stumbled onto editing yeah, for like sure. this. Yeah, I think um, for me it was all about like when I was taking photos. I was just at the start. I was just using like Visco presets, and I was like okay this is cool but I want to create my own I want to learn how to make presets and use them and also at the time I was in Southampton and I didn't know much about like experimental photography and there was a photographer uh, Martina also known as Ginger Dope shout out to her who was like using Prism and she was literally the first person that I guess I saw using it and introduced like Prism to like a wider crowd Mm -hmm. and I think I loved her work so I kind of like got inspired by how she uses prisms and I kind of wanted to take it a step further so with a lot of my work um I've now stopped using prisms but I went on eBay did some research ordered like a bunch of different shaped prisms because every shape gives Mm. a different effect ordered like five started playing around and then I was like okay how can we take this a step further started playing with double exposure and at the time my camera allowed me to take a photo and then take another photo but the previous photo would be in the photo. So I could I could position oh, everything in camera. Wow, I've never doing... seen that before. It's usually yeah. you have to guess. Out... <laughs> mm-hmm. Canon 70D is amazing. Oh, like wow. Still to this day, I have the camera. If you are starting out, um, it is one of the best cameras for, like, you know, an amateur, semi-pro kind of person. Um, and, yeah, and that's what I started doing all my double exposures oh. in camera, all the Jack Aaron stuff was in camera, literally like I was at the gig like like this and people were just like what's happening um so I think for me it was just also trying to replicate the music so if I'm listening to an artist for like example Jax Jones he's like a house artist I want to like replicate the visual the energy you know the the kind of like music that he creates so every artist I photograph I try to like you know I have to like them I have to like deep their music and look at how to present them and um, some of them is like just showing you the, the, the you know, the, the big crowds. Um, like the photo right here, a, bo- um, a boogie um, with the hoodie. Oh, yeah, so basically yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's just about like trying to show what they're kind of like and also at the same time trying to be creative. Because yep. I feel like with Prism, there was a point where I was just going overboard. Yes. And it's like, okay, does this add to the photo or not? And if it doesn't add, then it doesn't need to be there. That's a really um, so good point about, um, sorry to interject, um, a really good point about prisms. I think we've all been there with prisms as well. It's like, oh, we just got a prism for Christmas. Let's go create. Yeah, you go, <laughs> and you go too hard and then you seem to like, I still use them occasionally, but it's very, very <laughs> subtle. Like you almost can't tell it's a prism. It's just yeah. like a flare or it's a something on the edge of the photo yeah. rather than the whole prism effect. Um, yeah, 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 I I totally agree. Um, And I think I started developing how to use it to an effect. So there is a Georgia Smith photo where she's like doing something with her hand and the prison is like kind of shaping the frame. So I think when I started doing that, I was like, okay, it has to shape the frame. It has to add, enhance something. Um, And then I'm not going to lie, recently for the past year, I've just been working. So when I say I've been working, I haven't been creative. So a lot of my work is just like, your standard photo with a star filter, maybe a prism, um, more moving image. Again, I like to always challenge myself. So from then I was like, okay, how do I take this step further? Like I can take videos, but let's merge the two. And this was the time that I was looking at a lot of like Spencer Miller's photos, um, like a lot of Gibson Hazard. And I was really inspired by his videography um, and just like how to make moving images. And I used to see on like the Visco pages about um, the cinemagraph and I thought they were cool but you know let's make it a bit more so I started incorporating like music and like video images and text and overlays on YouTube to create moving images which I don't know if it has a name right now but it's like to capture a snippet of a gig and it's like on a loop with the music and you know the motion so for example you know if there's smoke in the image you can make that move um yeah just always trying to elevate my work I guess um right now at the point of like what can I do next so I'm looking at text 
Um, I never really had a design background. I know I've gone off tangent, sorry. No, no, it's great because but, I, I th it's all really relevant and um, it, regardless of if you've had a design background, you have a design eye. So it's really great to hear, yeah. you know, your pathway. So please do continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've never really had a design background, but I feel like, again, like I said, like I've always been creative. Like, you know, since I was like a kid, I'd always used to like write my own horoscopes and make my own magazines. And me and my friend used to make our own like anime mangas. Like I've always had, and make our own Pokemon. Like I still have a book of us creating our own Pokemon with all these like effects. Um, so I think I've always had that. I just didn't know where to like challenge it. And I think YouTube, I will say, YouTube is free mm. and it is the best tool in the whole world. I've learned everything from YouTube. Also, people that are photographers and videographers you know i'm blessed enough now to know so many people that i assist them on shoots you know ask them questions you know just be engaged in their work as well because i think i don't get inspired by when people say who inspires you i say my instagram feed yeah. like everybody follow like it's not just one person and i can never ever ever give like one person credit because it's not like i'll see something from one person's photo and another person's and combined it because I'm like I like that um and also another thing like this may sound ignorant but like I don't really know any iconic photographers like I haven't done the research into like who is who started photography who paved the movement for me like the past is great to know and understand but when it comes to photography I think we're in such an age that the people that inspire me the most are people that are like brand new and don't have like have like 50 followers like mm -hmm. people that don't give a shit about following and just create art oh, like I'm yes. not like obviously there are iconic photographers but like for me their work doesn't evoke anything in me yeah so I just I think it's important to also say like you don't have to name all these like iconic names like it's not it's not about that it's about you know just to see what inspires you um but also I do I do think I do need to research <laughs> about the iconic history of photography because that is good to know yeah i mean i look i was exactly the same oh hey leak proof thanks so much for the follow um i definitely was the same i think it definitely when you're self-taught you know you've just picked up a camera and you've just off you go mm -hmm. um you yeah you haven't studied you haven't gone to university you haven't gone to a school to mm -hmm. study so you haven't learned the theoretical background of um you know yeah. who inspired the greats or who inspired those people and that's that's totally fine i think like we all have our own learning path um and i've definitely found too some of the, the photographers that um have really inspired me especially like iconic hip-hop photographers from the 90s there's definitely ones like jonathan Mannion has a decent following but there's definitely guys like mike miller and um uh Oriel Estevez, I think his name is, um, like they don't have huge followings. Like these guys were like doing mm -hmm. iconic hip hop photography in the nineties and like barely anyone knows who they are. So like what you just said about um, being inspired by people that have like 50 followers, like I totally resonate with yeah. that. And you know, some of the, the people that really inspire me are also, you know, 16 year old people have just picked up a camera and, um, done one of my photo challenges that have just like seen something in a way exactly. that I was like wow I would never have seen that like that's incredible um hey Mildred you're not too late at all it's so well um so lovely to have you here it's never too late to join uh we're just talking to Isha here just about her background into music photography so um yes she's a very inspiring and wonderful photographer um, but I think the other thing that I really love about you and I think is really refreshing and I don't know, I don't know how you're going to, um, respond to this, but I love, Shout it. I love your Twitter feed and I love how you just give zero fucks and like, yeah. you're very um, vocal and you're very like, I, I've been, I've. I think we might have spoke about this when we met up, but I used to be like that when I was a bit younger and I definitely, um, I had a couple of things happen. I was blacklisted from a few places and um, I definitely had to tone myself down a little bit. Um, but when I see people okay. that are doing it, like without just saying all the things that we want to say, I'm just like, yes, go mm -hmm. girl. And you're yeah. very much like that. And where does that just come from? 
where does that come from? Is that just like part of your personality? Um, um, obviously, I haven't had any negative yeah. backlash or anything, which is good. Oh, well, well, we'll see. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't, I don't really know if I'm honest. I think, I think I, I wasn't always like this. Um, you know, confident. I would say I started off, you know, first, second, even third year of uni, very shy. Wouldn't really interact with people. Wouldn't really talk to people. Didn't really like that. But I think in my third year of uni, when I was like 20, 21, I realised that you cannot make a living off photography if you don't talk to people, if you don't stand your ground, if you don't stand up for yourself. Because if you look at other businesses, like, for example, if you're a lawyer, like, your main thing is authority. Your main thing is, like, how you carry yourself. People will hire you on your reputation. Like, and I think that your reputation is probably the most horrible quality, apart from, obviously, your work. But... I think I've just, I know a lot of people who may be average at what they do, but the way they carry themselves is so believable and so like confident that you kind of want to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I take, I take a lot of in- inspiration from like, again, my friends, my family, people I've seen on TV, like, you know, fake characters. And I kind of like see that and try to emulate it. So I just started to change my mindset about like how to be and it was definitely a slow kind of thing about being vocal like it kind of came with confidence so I would like slowly try to talk to new people approach people you know send emails um, not be worried about not getting replies or rejecting Mm. emails so it was a slow process and I think only like the last two three years I was very like stable and happy with being vocal because I think for me there's so many people um, that email me and say stuff like, um, hey, we want you to shoot this. Here's the budget. And then I reply with, okay, can you do it for this amount? And they'll say, with, oh, but the other photographers we've worked. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. You can reply to the email respectfully and say, sorry, we cannot. But do not put the blame on, on photographers. other photographers who don't know better. Yes. Like, and it just, it guilt trips you. It gaslights you. It makes you think that your work isn't of value and I think that is the most disgusting thing of of, of a client to say Um, I've got other emails like we're going with a friend which to me is so disrespectful it's like saying your work's not good enough that we're just going to go with a mate with a DSLR imagine saying that in any other industry imagine saying that like oh I was going to get surgery but I went with my mate because he like did it exactly it's it's only us that gets bullshit like that it's so disrespectful I like I was I'm so sick of it because a lot of these people were these big old white men in these big old white companies that I knew were hiring me because it's in to be diverse and it's in to have diverse in your bio. <laughs> you have a diverse company and I did not want to be part of their diverse quota because at the end of the day, like, I'm glad you are helping people, but helping only comes with good intentions. And if you don't have good intentions and you're not actually helping because you're just doing it to fill a quota. So I just kind of wanted to be vocal on that part. And if people ever use the word diverse to me, I'd be like, don't use that. Like, you're a white man. Stop it. Like, we don't. Like, people of colour, black people, Asian people, everybody does not need to hear that. Um, it, it just kind of got me annoyed and, I guess, full of anger. And I just wanted to channel the anger in a way. And, you know, some people have said to me that you like, I love your tweets, but... <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, sometimes I need to. Like, I've stopped doing threads. I've tried to calm down. Um, I don't name anybody unless unless I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to be blacklisted. I know I'm going to be cut off. Um, I try to keep it, like, general. So I'll tweet my experiences. So that's the thing that I've learned to do is tweeting your experiences, not, like, who the yes. companies are. Because that's, really day, good. that's really good. That's really good advice. Yeah. It doesn't matter unless, like, this company, for example, like, um, I think Paper Magazine just came out as, like, one of their only black editors quit, and then the CEO was, like, saying some racist shit, like, oh, I don't believe it was a racial matter. And it's, like, the fact that your black employee is telling you that they quit because of racial issues and you're, like, dismissing their voice is disgusting. So, of course, call them out. Yeah, I would definitely do that. I've only called one client out because they did not pay us for 90 days <laughs> yeah. and there was a team of like 16 creatives and none of us got paid and because I called them out they paid us. Oh my so god, I that- had this 
treated. I've had the exact okay. same experience. I've only ever called out a company publicly once, and it was a yeah. it was an organisation that showed my film, which is a women in music film on International Women's Day, and then decided not to pay us for eight months. And I was like, and I, I was so like, so offended. I went, you know, I had to see a, a lawyer had written a letter. We'd written multiple emails. Oh, wow. So I was like, I said to my lawyer, can you please let me know if it's okay if I tweet? And she was like, usually I would say no, but this is last resort. Um, and so I tweeted, wow, and within okay. 20 minutes, they paid us <laughs> because they got this huge backlash because, every, like, you know, in Australia, a lot of people have seen my film and it had a, a lot of impact. So people were horrified that they would have used our film to get people into their venue and then not yeah. paid the women that were responsible for making the film on International Women's Day. Like... Yes, so okay. I, I, I think last yeah. resort, I'm not really massive on call-out culture in all instances. Yeah, I think I it's agree. gone over the, overboard and it can be quite toxic, but there are instances where it works. So I'm really glad that you brought yeah. that up because <laughs> I think it yeah, can I be. I think obviously just to, just to highlight, I'm not saying like if they don't reply to emails, like if you have like we threatened legal action yeah, you've got it's um, like none of last us got lawyers resort. Involved. yeah yeah and one of us actually went to their office and the person who was in finance wasn't in so oh, we, we did all these steps yeah. um and it was like it was me and the other girl who was kind of leading this kind of like demand um and then what was interesting is they paid me and her but nobody else oh my god so then we were like okay no we still have to fight just because they've paid us it's not fair like my other, my, the other people on the team haven't got paid yes. so we just demanded demanded and um, obviously adding a late fee that is something you're legally entitled to so in the UK you can go on the .gov website and it will tell you how much I believe if it's under a grand you can add like a £40 late fee oh, cool. so check that out for you know whatever um, country you live in but you are entitled to add a late fee if it's past 30 60 or 45 days so it just depends on that. Um, I would say if you are having trouble with a client, the best thing to do is I send follow-up email. So the day the payment's due, I'll wait. The next day I'll send an email saying, hey, just wondering when this will get paid. So you have to word it as though you're not demanding money, but you're asking. The week later, I'll send another email saying, hey, just chasing up. I really need this to get paid. So you're again trying to briefly demand, but you're still asking. And then if it's two weeks late, I'm just going to say, sorry, here's the late fee, pay it now, or it will just get increasingly bigger and bigger. And then if they haven't paid in a month, it's like you threat them legal action saying, if you do not pay this by this day, I will, you know, get um, lawyers involved. Mm -hmm. Usually by then they pay. I've never had to go a step further. Um, I just send them really like wordy emails and they just get scared. But if you have to go a step further, then maybe consult people who have done this before yep. um, and send them a template you know a template email yes. um, and if you're having real big problems hey I'm not going to blame you if you call them out but yeah it can it can kind of get to that point can't it um, Brits just said in the chat um, I remember you telling me this story Michelle when you helped me call out the discrimination I was facing and how it's useful in certain situations yes and I think it was useful in your situation as well Brit um, that I mean that was blatant uh, discrimination um, of Br Brittany uh, just so you know she shoots in a wheelchair and she um, she was told by security that she was uh, in fact not able to shoot one night and was basically a safety risk to the patrons <laughs> so uh, it was just it, yeah ridiculous so that yeah there's definitely certain situations where um calling out is uh appropriate but i definitely think it, you've got that was such great advice there in terms of the steps like you don't threaten legal action straight away like you don't have to get no, nasty no. with clients and you want to retain yeah. really great relationships with clients as well so there's um <laughs> there's definitely a way to um yeah, just start off really friendly. Hey, how you going? Like, uh, just chasing up this invoice, and then you can kind of escalate the uh, the intention of your your tone of your intention of the email. Um, hey, Nicolita, so lovely to see you here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. 
Um, we're just talking about chasing invoices, which I'm sure you know about as well. <laughs> we're, um, uh, let's actually stay on this this path um, because it's something that I get asked about all the time and I know um, it's really hard for creatives to know how to actually price themselves. Like, do you want to give a bit of advice and just when you're starting out, how to gauge what your worth is? Because I think this is really, really hard. And it really, I think, especially for female photographers, really struggle to put value on ourselves and our art. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on this, your okay. opinion. So I think when I was starting out, I think I just heard this rumor going around that photographers get paid 50 pounds per hour so I was just like okay I'm not going to do any research I'm just going to go with that <laughs> and then as I started doing jobs that I didn't account for editing so I would charge a client like for a two-hour shoot like 100 pounds but then I have to edit I didn't account for that so I was like this doesn't make any sense so then I started asking people like people of different caliber so this is important mm. so when I was starting out I was good but I wasn't obviously of the caliber of someone who has been doing it for five years and I would ask them, what do you charge and what would you recommend mm. for someone who's starting out? Engage a kind of like rough estimate, but also ask the people in your area. So I live in London. Prices are going to be more competitive than somebody who lives in Southampton or Birmingham or other suburbs that, you know, are not in London. Mm. And obviously currency comes into that. Um, you know, we're, we're first world country, you know, people can afford to pay this and this. A lot of them kind of factors are important to take into consideration so i started off with this whole 50 pound thing and just thought like this isn't worth it like i'm making it my full-time job so you can't work for minimum wage you have to like you know kind of increase that you have to also account for travel so what i normally do is i like to just say my rate is this amount plus expenses because for me i live like in the suburbs of london if i'm doing a shoot and it's like the other end of london um, you're going to have to pay for a travel or an Uber if I have heavy equipment um, if it's like I have to get the train you have to pay for that and I, I never know the exact price so I just like to say plus expenses um, also expenses includes like food so legally um, in the UK um, every six hours you need a break like legally so if the shoot is like a whole day they need to like obviously pay me for food um, that I can you know eat a carry on doing my work um so that's a good thing to put in um another thing i would say so it depends on i charge by client and i firmly believe about charging by who is hiring you so when i first started out yes. my first two years were like it was i was in uni it wasn't like i wasn't doing it for real and i was just shooting gigs and i wasn't getting paid because it was all publication work and then once i started getting paid I was like, okay, you can charge by client. So if it's, for example, um, a portrait shoot with a, with a model who is not signed and it's coming out of their pocket, just understand, you know, it's one person who's paying you. Um, it's probably not going to be much. So in the UK, maybe for an hour shoot, you know, £100, £150 per hour, I think would be kind of reasonable because you have to value, you know, all of these factors that go into it. Um, definitely when I was starting out it was like 50 pounds per hour yes. at the low end yes um, um, and you kind of develop that you just said something really important that I just wanted because I've said this before in this stream before it's real I think it's really important I still do the same thing to charge based on your client if your client is an independent unsigned artist that's just started out versus a client that is a label that has label backing that yeah. completely different rates um, mm -hmm. really important 100%. to know to understand and know um, I guess who's paying for it if there's budgets all of those things mm -hmm. really 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 important yeah I think that's a really important factor so when it comes to music um, it's also important to charge okay so live music right mm -hmm. are we going to be doing the first three songs or are we going to be doing the whole gig so I would recommend for every photographer to make their own pricing sheet and do not post this public because it's very off-putting when you go on a photographer's website and it tells you the price because there's no room for negotiation. There's no room for like, but I'm I'm an independent artist. Have it for yourself. It's just for yourself so to refer you, to. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but also when people email you, you can 
you know, just send them the sheet and it's like a nicely formatted sheet that they can look at. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we just but, got a um, subscription gifted. Steph gifted a subscription to um, Bethan Miller. Thank you so much, Steph. That's very, very lovely. <laughs> hey, Bethan. Oh, yeah, amazing. Keep continuing. But yeah, again, like I say, like still to this day, um, depending on like, I, I, don't know, I don't really class myself at a certain level, but I still will photograph bands who are like not signed and obviously do it at a, a lower rate because it matches them just because I feel like everyone deserves nice nice photos. So I just feel like it definitely depends on what you want to take. So yes. um, that's a good factor. But a rough estimate, because I know people like to hear prices. Mm-hmm. Um, if I remember correctly, if it's for like, you know, an unsigned band and it's just like three songs of their gig, um, I'd probably charge 150 um, for that. And then when it comes for photos, I kind of give them... I guess like 10 would be a good number because I don't want to give them so much, but I want to give them enough. Um, And also it does depend on how many people are in the band because they're all paying you. So just take that into account. If it's obviously for um, a label or like a manager or an artist who has the budget, a live gig can be anywhere from like 250 to like 400, I would say. Um, A lot of the time I do work with labels and I do work with um, artists and they want me to do video and photo Mm. so that is something I'm still struggling with with pricing but that would definitely be up there in like the 350 minimum for a gig if it's video and photo because at the same time yes you're only there for like a certain amount of time but you're doing two jobs and you have to factor in like video editing is a lot of work so it really really does depend one thing I like to do is before we discuss rates is just say, hey, so how much do you have budgeted for this project? And you can gauge what they would say because sometimes a client has come to me and they've been like, okay, no, we want to know your rate. So I'll just give them a rate and they agree and I'm like, oh God, no, let me go higher. Like I should have gone higher. So a kind of good rule of thumb, if it's with a big client, um, then you can definitely afford to go higher. So I know... I do branded work with like Adidas and Nike mm. and a lot of their projects. Like the bare minimum I know I'll get paid is like a thousand. Like you can go up to 10, 35, like for these branded projects. So I know for a fact, um, always aim high, but don't insult your client. So do your research. Yes. Um, again, like I say, if it's like a big brand, you know, you can go in the, in the big figures. If it's a manager and a label, you can still go in the big figures, but also don't don't go too high. And then if it's an independent artist, probably best to ask them what they have budgeted. And then you can kind of look at the rates and take on what you feel is fit. Um, I know for a fact, like, I still work with, like, whoever I vibe with and like and feel passionate about. So I don't discriminate on, like, small following. Mm. Like, that doesn't matter to me. As long as, like we vibe and I like you and like everything's good um and if you want if you want me to do the work then I'm happy to so it definitely does depend yeah that's such great advice um and I like absolutely echo all of your sentiments I completely agree um as and also too I feel like some of those um you don't know where those entry level artists will end up you don't know if you're start, you know, <laughs> starting out a relationship with someone that's just burst onto the scene, and you hit it off, yeah. where that could go, and all of like all of the best relationships that I have that have gone the furthest have started when the the person nobody knew who they were, you know, and you've started off that's- probably not working for very much. Um, and it's, yeah, you know, then people are very loyal. People are very loyal, especially if you know if. It, I've stressed this so many times and it's it's really hard to not continue to harp on about how important the friendships and relationships with artists are, but they're literally yeah. the people that give us our jobs. They're literally the people that will take us on tour. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really, really important. Um, uh, Nicolina's yeah. just asked, do you have a contact for working with smaller artists? 
or just cover usage via text, or a contract, sorry, I just read that wrong, um, or just cover via text email. I personally, I don't have contracts. I actually do it all in email mm -hmm. and via my invoicing. Um, it's, yeah. I've never had any issues. Uh, it's, I spell it out very mm -hmm. clearly what is covered and what isn't covered. Um, I don't know about yourself, Isha, do you, are you similar? Um, so when I first started going freelance, this was in 2017, the first client I had, I had a contract because I was scared and I'm so glad I did because it was just some random small artist and she wanted to promo my photos and we have a group chat, we have emails and we discussed locations, we discussed stylists, we did the shoot, showed her the photos, no complaints. I got home, sent her the contact sheet, she emailed me saying, I don't like the style, the styling. Um, I, can I just pay for one? So then my response was, uh, I wasn't involved with styling. I'm a photographer. And luckily, in my contract, um, shout out to Jessica Cabasi, an OG who actually put her contract out for free. And in one of her clauses, it did mention um, the photographer is not responsible for makeup, styling, um, all of these things should be discussed before. And because of that single clause, like she was trying not to pay me, um, I got my full money because I said to her, look, you've signed a contract. I was with you on the shoot. The stylist was with you. Like if you had a problem, you should have vocalized it. Mm -hmm. Like we could have sorted it, squashed it. And I did actually give her extra time on the shoot. So I was very lenient towards her, but her issue was not something to do with me. Mm. And I couldn't control styling. Like I can't edit you some Adidas shorts. <laughs> like it doesn't happen. So I just said to her, no, I'm sorry. Like I've spent my time with you. You're going to have to pay me. I'll discount it a tiny bit for the editing, but you're still going to have to pay me because I've, I've just gone out of my way to do a shoot with you. Um, and she ended up paying me. She never used the photos, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. She still got paid. Yeah. Um, and I think that was an important lesson. Um, for me, I do use contracts. I don't use them as much as I should. Um, I use them a lot when it comes to smaller clients because there needs to be a trust. And I feel... I actually feel now it's the opposite. I feel like with smaller clients, there's more trust. And with bigger clients, they will mess you over a lot. Um, I like to have contracts, especially with touring, because you would not believe the amount of details that go into touring. Um, my contract for touring is like four pages long, and it covers like phone bill, it covers like travel, it covers like food, like, you know, clothing. <laughs> it covers so much, like, so much things that you wouldn't even think about. So I started to have contracts for touring. Um, also, something really important when you are on tour, when you're getting paid, you need to account for days off. You need to account for travel days. You should get paid the full amount. The way you have to look at it is you're booked for a tour, you're booked for two months. Mm. That is two months that you physically cannot work in your normal environment. So you still should get paid for every single day. If they try and discount it, you have to just argue and say, like, I could be in London earning, like, six grand, but you're out yeah, here paying me this much. I am. Um, you know what? I, I charge for tours. I know some people do day rates. I actually just do, like, um, like a tour rate, if that makes sense. Like, I work out, okay, okay, what am I happy earning based on the fact that if I was in Melbourne, I could be earning $6,000 this month yeah. or whatever. What am I happy yeah. earning because you know xyz um and that yeah. has worked pretty well for me but uh, but it's again it's really it's so tricky the touring is actually really tricky um to know touring how to, tricky, to yeah. price yeah so yeah it is and i think again it does depend on the tour like arena tour stadium tours um is it hotels is it a bus tour you have to factor everything into consideration um, and get paid fairly. I do know um, when I was on a tour, um, one of the tour managers said a rough estimate for like crew is like two, 250 to 350 per day. Um, that's what she told me. So it's just useful information to know. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. Um, and this was for an arena tour, yep. I believe. So very, very interesting. It's but really good to know I those guidelines, like to just just to yeah. have in your mind, you know, and then, yeah, if you're, let's say you're not doing an arena tour, but you're doing something that's a bit smaller, you can at least have that as a starting point yeah. to know, okay, cool. So if I was yeah. doing this, this is what I'd be getting. I'd be happy with whatever, $150 a day, whatever yeah. it is 
to work yeah. out what you're happy with for that particular tour and obviously your expenses yeah. like they're paying for your travel your mm-hmm. accommodation if it's not on a bus um, hotels all of those things um, visas yeah. all that stuff Lights. Yeah. Lights. Yeah. Very uh, yeah I think with touring it, it also factors in how long so I know there's people who would do a lower rate for a two month tour compared to like a two week tour and it does make sense because you technically are working every day and you're earning way more money than let's say you were just back in London. Yes. You might only book you book for one day a week. So definitely factor that in and match your price with that. Um, the best advice I can give is definitely have a touring contract, please. Another thing I will say is when you are on a tour, some artists or managers love to rinse you and they love to get promotional photos and they love to say, let's do a music video today oh, and get you to do extra work that is that not a touring be work. Extra. Um, put a clause in your contract yeah. that you are only getting paid to do behind the scenes, live music, touring environment. If there's anything promotional, then that is an extra fee. That is so important because I know a lot of photographers who get sucked into doing promo photos. And promo photos, you can charge a lot. You can charge, I know in the UK, from three to eight grand for a session because there are promotional photos, there are values. Yeah. Um, do not get you know sucked in by a tour manager who's like, oh, let's just do this. Say yes, but say you just have to pay me an extra. Yeah, yeah. you know you can just work things the, out. The way that I actually do um, that is I agree to do the shoot, and then if they're used in any way, it's that there's a usage fee. So I'm happy to shoot it yeah. um, because you know there's always mm-hmm. extra time that you have and. and I love doing that stuff anyway, but yeah. um, there is a clause that says it's a it's like a usage and it's paid based on how it's used. So if it's used just mm-hmm. for socials, that's a fee. Yeah. If it's used for whatever else, other promotional or right up to if it's used for, you know, even a yeah. EP or a single cover or something like that. So, um, yeah, I agree. I think usage as well is a really important topic that I don't think people also understand, like, Right now, like print is low key dead, um, and social media usage is the most prof- well, one of the most profitable because everybody is on it, it's accessible to everybody, um, and you should charge usage fees. So, what I mean by this is a lot of the times I will shoot something for a client, get paid for that, discuss the usage within that, but then a third party company will contact me. And I recently had this experience with a big music company asked me, can I use this photo on our socials? So I just said, okay, but can you pay a social media fee? Because you want to use my photo to promote your page. And they said, no. And I said, okay, so like, you just want free photos then. Like, what, like your big music company, your whole page is built off of live music photos, which I'm assuming were given for free, which is to me just disgusting because you have money, I know. And their whole response was just like, oh, but we're going to give you credit and this will give you the exposure to like our whatever amount of followers. And I was like, um, and then they, they made it about them. They were just like gaslighting me and like, oh, people have congratulated us for doing this. Like, we're helping you. And I was like, if you want to help me, you can pay me, but like, you can pay my bills. Um, exposure is not going to pay any bills. Expo- not to like sound rude, but I don't need exposure. I need money. Yeah, <laughs> like, legit. I, I, I have like a very similar um, attitude to these types of things. So I completely, completely agree with you. Um, yeah. Uh, Gabs just said in the chat, Cardi B stylist stole my image and then ignored every message I sent. So I got Insta to take it down. That's also another bag, really good thing. Yes. Yeah, so you, if, you, yeah. if that ever happens to you, you can file a DS, DM. DMCA? DCMA? What am, I've forgotten yeah. the... DCMA. Yeah. God, I've gone, forgotten the... Okay. the uh, and they're very... Yeah, like Gab just said, they're very good at taking it down if you can prove that it's your photograph. Um, I've definitely had yeah. to do that in a couple of instances as well if people are just ignoring my messages. Um, you can... Yeah. Um, DCMA, yes. You can file a DCMA with Instagram and they will take it down. It takes usually about between 24 to 72 hours um but it does oh it does happen yes that's amazing yes um but also following that i think it's also really important to like talk to your artist about this because um when i was on a tour with an artist um we were actually talking about credit and 
it's kind of funny because he he had this opinion of I posted this photo that a photographer took. I didn't credit them, and then they reported me and emailed me, and he was shocked about oh, it. Yeah, and I've I had this like, exact situation yeah, happen in the, in the because, past. Yeah, because you didn't. Because you didn't, and his response was, "But it's a photo of, of me." me. Yeah, like, yeah. The, f- the very <laughs> first um, tour, having... I had to explain this. Well, the very first tour I went on years ago, yeah. I had to explain this whole thing. Um, it's an education yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's important also to have them conversations in a nice, calm manner. Um, and luckily, like we had this conversation, I explained to him. I was like, "Look, I know you're big and all, but this is how it works." And then he was like, "Yeah, but then I posted the photo and credited him, and he blocked me." I was like, "You can't win. You, you just have to do it right the first, the first time." time yeah. But definitely, definitely try and have conversations rather than coming at it, because I, I see a lot of photographers also who just come at people that they work with, and yeah, I don't think that's why. I don't if you're think working so somebody. Don't, don't come at them just have a conversation um, and at the same time in some of my contracts um, I don't demand credit there are a lot of artists I work with that I say to them you're paying me for my work you're not paying me to credit me yep. um, it's up to you yep. if you want to credit me I don't like forcing credit um, 98% of the artists credit me anyways um, there's literally like 1% that don't and I understand why it is their brand I don't care I'm getting paid I don't really need their following. Yes. Um, and one person that, like, like Lewis Capaldi is really on it. So he was like, to his manager, you haven't credited Isha. Like, he is a person that you don't have to ask. He will do it. So I think that's when it actually feels more genuine, when somebody is, like, saying you need to credit. Yeah. Well, they know. feel like they want to credit you as an artist for your work. That's when it feels like yeah. the nicest relationship. Like, that's it's, it's genuinely yeah. a two-way thing yeah so so don't don't like obviously if you're not working with them you can demand it if yes. it's like a third yes but if you're working with an artist please don't at them <laughs> like you didn't credit me like no it doesn't look- oh my god yes I, and i've seen this happen like there's just no like a lot. social awareness or something like that's a relationship that you have with that person you can talk that out like you can and you should talk yeah. it out before you know how does this work or, or talk it out with management to say this is my expectation um but like you said if you're being paid like it's <laughs> it's i've always said if you're being paid it's a nice thing to do it's not an essential thing to do if you're not being paid and you're like that's a completely different like that is your currency to be credited yeah if you are being paid yeah you're being paid that your, your bills are being paid you don't have to like doubly that i mean like i said it's nice and like most artists will actually go you know over and above and credit you and it's a really really nice thing to do it's just not an essential thing so um yeah, yeah gab's just said she's have she has to go um so thanks for oh, tuning okay. well, in nice having you. yes I, I did want to you just touch on something that I, I think it'll be under your tour um yeah, it is. You toured with Lewis Capaldi last year. I wanted to touch on some of your tour work. That's your latest. Um, that's your latest one that you went on last year. And um, was it your last? I've one? done two more. Oh, okay. But I haven't, I haven't uploaded it. So, <laughs> yeah, one one is Aaron is up there, and the other one is an Interscope tour. Uh-huh. So that's a that's a diff, completely different type of tour. That was a label tour, and I will talk about that. Okay. Um, which one do you want to start? Yeah, with? Uh, do. I've got Lewis's one up on your screen, but do you want to talk a little bit about that one and then we can go into one of your other... Um... Okay, cool. Yeah, so with this tour, this obviously today is my the biggest tour I've ever done. Um, and just to like give people information on how I got yes, that. Cause yes, yes. Um, it was literally an Instagram DM. So it was a private account. The account was like a picture of a cat, but because it was followed by industry people, um, I kind of knew that it was definitely somebody poor. And all it said is, big music opportunity, ring. And I was like, this sounds like... Oh, that's um, a scam. If, if, I I got that, if I got that message, I would oh, literally no, delete I it. Rang. <laughs> I found your number. You're I, so... On a Sunday, it was like nine o'clock. I remember you telling me this story. Sunday. And I was like, there's no way I would have rung that number. I would have been like, big industry. I, I know I, it's, I said... it's good on you. Yeah. Legit. I replied to everybody, I know. And then I rang her up and she it was, a, it was a lovely woman and she was just saying, Hey, I am so and so head of Virgin EMI Records. I was like, Oh, <laughs> it could still could be a scam. 
still could be a scam. And she didn't name the artist. She was just talking about this opportunity. And I was like, okay, she sounds more legit. And she started texting me. I was like, it still could be a scam. Um, and then we had like a conversation for like two months, just texting. Um, and she did turn out to be legit, so it was all good. And she was just kind of briefing me on it for two months um, and then setting me up meetings with the manager, trying to get me to meet the artist. Um, so I didn't actually meet Lewis until I went on tour just because of schedules were so hectic. But there was just like a lot of prep involved, which was really good on their behalf. Um, just saying like, you know, it is going to be like a tour with like 30 Scottish men, um, you know, just so you know. And I was like, OK. Um, but one thing I really like about um, why she contacted me is she just said um, the reason why I wanted you to do this is because you're very vocal online. Um, you have a presence that isn't just a photographer presence. You're very vocal about like being a woman of colour, you know, um, and about like representation. Um, you also talk a lot about astrology, which she found funny. Um, and I think they they were looking at a person yeah. to hire, not a yeah, your personality. Her her points were like, you're so different that I think you'll bring something to the team that they don't know and they don't have. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. And she's like, just are you okay with being, you know, on this big tour? And I was like, you know what? Um, just because I don't photograph that genre doesn't mean I'm going to say no. It's a big opportunity. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to see how it goes. Yeah. So uh, I did the Europe as like a trial kind of run to see how it would be. And you know, the second day in tour, he got ill and cancelled like four days. So second day in tour, went home, but had to go all the way back to Spain. So it was, it was a bit of like a rocky, a rocky kind of road. It was such a different environment to me. Like it was a whole bus tour with a few hotels. Um, and I love buses. I love the whole idea of like, we're all in the bus like sleeping together like playing games and it was a very nice like kind of feel um totally different like genre crowd people like i was the only person of color um there wasn't one other woman but it was just me and that's her that's wild um, like that's it, it, in the, in it a is tour is that and big whole, yeah his whole crew it everybody knew so everybody in that crew had been working together for 20 plus years mm. everybody was a family so I think it's very hard when you kind of try and join a family tour and you're very different to everybody and you're trying to like fit in and you don't really know where to go. But I will say like everybody was so lovely and so supportive and very hard working people. Like I would get up at like one o'clock and you know, roll into the venue, everybody in the crew would be up at 8 a.m. Um, I will say like a very organized team, like one of the most organized tours I've ever been on. No hiccup at all. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was it was very different for me, um, just in terms of like interacting with people and banter, and like <laughs> even though we're from Britain, Scottish people are so weird, and they're texted by my accent, and I was like, "You're from Scotland, like shut up. It's not even a thing." That's um, so funny. But no, I think I think I learned a lot from them, and hopefully they learned a lot from me, and it kind of rubbed off. Yeah. Um, but for me as a creative, um, because of his caliber he's not really somebody that you can be as creative with so I think it was a great experience but for me personally I wanted to do a lot more and um, his whole brand is just like humor Mm. so a lot of images you know that I took were that he used were only promo images so um, for me I was just like it's great working with you like you're a great crew but I want to find somebody that is posting every day is posting gifts like for me it has to be a one-on-one like interaction online um and his presence is mainly just like we'll post once a week yes yeah it's very chill yep. very laid back um but like i say like it was an am- i learned so much yes. on that talk you felt so like much. you could be offering more as a creative to somebody that would be using the content yeah yeah um let's show another uh, what's another one that you've got up on your website that i can show that you feel like um maybe you were able to be a bit more creative um i haven't uploaded all the photos but like obviously i work a lot so with mahalia it's just like an ongoing relationship um there's a tour so, up here. I'll, I'll show a bit of that yeah um and also obviously aaron ray there's that one probably is a good one as well um so with with other tours i've done 
I should probably like talk about my first view and how yeah, I got into touring. Yeah, well, I think um, everyone loves to hear the how did you get into touring story because it's... Uh, it's... It's just another mad story. Um, again, second year of uni, 2016, um, one of my friends from this band called Montrose who was in Bristol, and I, at this time I only knew one of them, he was like, oh, we're doing a tour in Canada, we're teaming up with a Canadian band. I don't know what possessed me to just message him and like, oh, it'd be really sick if I could come and take photos. At this point, I knew one of eight members. Uh, and he was like on it. He was like, yeah, sure, like, you can come along. Um, we can't pay you, but we'll pay for, like, your accommodation and travel on the tour. Um, and all I had to do is book flights. So I was looking at it like, I was in very early stages of my career. I wasn't earning any money externally. I was in uni. I was financially stable. So I was like, fuck it, flights were cheap at that point. I just booked the flight and um, got a plane, you know, to Canada. And it was a very budget van tour all around West, East, Middle Canada um, and with people that I just met. And one thing I will say is, like, Canadians have a, a spot in my heart because a lot of them have given me the steps to where I am now. And, you know, it felt like a family tour. It was amazing. To me, it was like low-key a free holiday to go around Canada. <laughs> but then it, um, I, everybody was like a family. It was, everybody gelled so well that it was just amazing. And literally from then, um, I kind of like, I don't know how, but like Canadians started to hire me. So in 2017, two Canadian bands came to the UK and hired me because they met me on that tour. And, you know, I just, you know, Canadians are amazing. So did the UK tour with them. And then 2018, I went back to Canada with another Canadian band. Um, again, these are all, you know, um, they're signed to small labels, but they don't have much budget. Um, and these were paid, by the yeah. way. The first one wasn't, the other ones were. So I went to Canada and did an American Canadian tour. God, and then that kind of put, that was like two months. And that kind of put me like, I hate America. I was literally like, no. Um, but again, and then from that 2018 year was when I started getting approached by labels and managers for tours. So I did like my first professional tour with Jack Jones. And for me, it was just like, it was insane. It came from like a recommendation from a photographer and I loved, I loved it. It was only four dates, so it was like traveling. I'm showing some of those images I now, so yeah. Oh God, really? yeah, I just, I just like, I love him, him as an artist is my ideal artist. Like, he's such a fun, down-to-earth, like, just fun person to be around. His, I love his music. Like, I, I jam to it daily. It's not something that people know, but, like, I just love his music. Um, his team is great. His effects and graphics, like, he was such fun because he allowed me to be 100% creative. Like, there was no, you can't do this. I just did whatever. And they loved that I took the initiative and made gifts and made moving images and uh, had so much fun with that. So I carried on working with him for the rest of 2018, did various stuff, so like music videos and like top of the pop. And like, he gave me an opportunity to like go to these iconic places and, you know, document him, oh. um, you know, it's insane. Um, and then from then it, the snowball effect kind of happened where artists that I really wanted to work with, like Mahalia, like I always loved her music and respected her as like a human because she's she's so vocal about everything and body image and you know i really love that when an artist actually cares mm. um kind of snowballed from there um then i shot stuff with mr easy who is an amazing amazing person like he's more than an artist he's a public figure he does a lot of charity work he has companies in america china he has companies all, he's a billionaire he has Whoa. companies all over the world i'm showing some of these but, photos now it's easy. I don't know who that is. I've never heard of him before. Oh, he's an Afrobeat artist cool. and he's uh, Nigerian. Awesome. And one thing I love about him is he has charity uh, like um, organizations in Nigeria and Ghana. And he even said to me, like, ideally, I want to hire somebody from Nigeria to document myself. But there's so much like things with visas mm. and like no one has to this that what he's doing is like um, buying equipment for a company so he can train like creative oh, wow. in Nigeria so cool. and I think like I think like that's just such an amazing thing and he's always like meeting like you know presidents of all these like different places and like having meetings um and one person that is like probably the biggest 
person I ever know is he's so chill like every day he'll be like oh hey how are you like what have you been up to he'll ask me about my life he'll be like what what socks should I wear what do you think like random shit like that. um one person that I just see is like you know on the same level and I think that's really important because for me I can't work with people that aren't if you're not humble, sorry, I cannot work with you. And yes. believe it on, more, more smaller artists are more dramatic than the big ones. Yeah. Obviously, I have been on that, um, where there's big artists, like a lot of rappers are just like so, I don't even know the word, but um, that is, um, I have a label, so it's just like a, a one-on-one kind of hire. I'm not with them because I, I don't think I could stand being on a set with a UK rapper. Yeah, I'm sure in the R and Ray shots now. Um that was I was, yeah. This this tour was really unique because it was literally just four days in the UK. Um and I got it from Interscope because I was photographing Ari Lennox for Interscope and then somebody from Interscope put me in touch with um Aaron's rep and you know I didn't know him. We just met on email and I got to like spend four days with him supporting Ari Lennox and it was great because I already had this relationship with Ari Lennox before so I knew her and her manager and that tour to this day is the best tour I know it was four days but it is the best tour I've ever been on every I can't even like explain how amazing it was like every single person was the most nicest respectful person in the world I, I went into the venue I didn't even know who these people were everybody was shaking my hand Everybody would stop what they were doing, come up to me, shake my hand. A hundred percent black crew, a hundred percent, except for one videographer who was white, but a hundred percent, like it was insane. Everybody had this just really respectful attitude. Um, the whole of Aaron's crew was just lovely, a pleasure I to be s- around. Wait, like, I hang on two even... seconds. I saw this mm-hmm. photo the other day. I don't know if you've got your Twitch up. I saw this photo. Yeah, yeah on i think it was we transfer have we transfer like yeah i saw the photo it was legit this photo here that's up on the screen and i was like who took this photo is it it the crowd shot yeah the crowd shot in the orange i was like this is a. oh yeah so i i i have a we transfer account so that's why they featured it because that's my background my we transfer account. it just came up the other day and i was like first of all i've never seen a music photography photo on we transfer and who took this photo this photo is great and it's so random it literally happened like two days ago and i know i've seen the photo um, yeah that's oh, so cool. yeah um yeah i don't know i just think um i really really i loved his music mm. um but i think the main part for me was his team everybody like, i cannot stress how how much i love everybody was so so lovely um a pleasure to be around because mm. that's what you want yeah especially him as an artist very very chill very like just a good human it makes so, it like so think, much easier as a tour experience to have that type of crew that are just like awesome yeah and i think for me um especially like a lot of the work that i do do is especially of black people um i am obviously trying to do more south asian creatives as an artist but there's not a lot but i do find myself um involved in documenting you know a lot of black artists um and i feel just from the people that I hang around with and the environment that I am in, it is definitely predominantly um, black and like brown. So I, I just find it more comfortable. The topics that we discuss, um, and one of the girls on his team was just educating me on like racism in America and like how her last name is her like slave owner's name and like just stuff that is like so deep that I could never have a conversation with with like a white person because they don't experience it and. Um, it's just it's just a different environment so i think i i know where i want to carry on my work and i think it definitely just involves um black culture and brown culture where i can um because it's just amazing so that's one thing for me that i've always always tried to like support and um a lot of the times that clients will ask me do you want an assistant and i will tweet like only women of color because a hiring more women is important and hiring people of colour is important. So I try to hire South Asian and black people because for me, obviously, they're just the most people that A, are really good at what they do and they deserve the platform, but because we live in this world, they don't get the platform. So, and I've done that a lot. Um, And again, it's not a pat on the back. It's just like 
me being able to give somebody a money for their work and be a platform um, and I don't choose photographers based on clout so I did some work with Nike and they were offering like my sister like 500 pounds to basically not do much and I said to her like look you don't have to do anything but can you just come and like take some photos in case and she was like this is more money than I ever got paid in my life and I was like well you deserve it you can put this on your portfolio yeah. you can put it on your CV I've worked with Nike like officially and, and you know, yeah. that's important. Like, as you grow, you need to bring people up with you. Mm-hmm. So now I'm to, like, no makeup artist, you know, no stylist. And when I do shoot, I ask the client, can I bring on this MUA, this stylist? And yes. so eventually we're just all going to grow together because there is room for every single creative in the world. Totally. Um, hey, Ethan, just saw you jump up in the chat. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah, I, I, I work exactly the same way, definitely with, um, you know, people that I love working with and, and, you know, if I'm brought on for a shoot, then try and bring the whole team whenever, whenever possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, Yeah. totally agree with that. That's so cool. And it's obviously, um, just in, in going back to what you just said there, also the reason that you're so passionate, um, about the collective that you've just made um, and obviously what's happening at the moment in the world too. So it makes so much sense that it's all connected, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. Does anyone have any uh, questions for Ish? Um, I'm just showing some uh, the rest of this your tour work. I wanted to ask you, um, I guess, about like looking forward and um, it, what are your thoughts on moving past this weird time that we do you think it's going to get back to normal like do you hope that it doesn't go back to normal like what's what where um, i mean obviously we want to be shooting you mean again. like covid uh i guess all of it like in terms of okay. where the world is we've been we haven't been able to shoot for a few months um mm-hmm. and okay. concerts like we don't know when that's happening it's still i think people forget <laughs> it's still a really weird time for us and what we've chosen to do as our career you know yeah i think choosing to do live music is one of the biggest risks to take because it literally relies on other people and i always tweet about how much i hate relying on other people (laughs) because everybody just you know has their own shit but i think currently live music photographers are gonna struggle because already that before this even happened there's already kind of like a supply and demand kind of like shortage like there's so many artists and there's so many photographers but not every artist is hiring photographers so it was already kind of like fine-tuned before mm. so i think now it's going to be even more tighter on for example who gets hired um i think definitely the people that get hired the most will just be on repeat yeah. i don't think there's going to be many opportunities for others which is a horrible shame yeah. but it's purely just based on budget and like how much the music industry has lost. I hope that music concerts will return like next year. Um, obviously I want it to be safe. I don't think it's a good idea to do social distancing concerts because for me, a concert is all about being surrounded by people screaming the lyrics. Mm. I don't want to be sitting down wearing a face mask, watching a musician. I think if we're going to return, it should be like a full return, um, which, you know, it's hard to say because most of my money is like from live music and touring and touring obviously isn't really an option right now (laughs) it sucks Um, so i think this time photographers should actually take it to expand their craft so i know a lot of us have just been taking pictures of nature and the trees but if you're good at landscape i mean if you're really really good at it oh my god you can make so much money Mm. so find other avenues try do product photography um, commercial you know brand and all of that kind of stuff is where I make my income to live that stuff is like one shoot you know can pay for your entire year's rent that stuff has a lot of money in it um, you just need to have you know the portfolio and the clients start now you know use the lamp set up a little space in your house start shooting some products and sneakers and perfume stuff that like you know need good quality photos for um, start doing more portrait work if you haven't expanded. You know, you can do that with your family members, with your pets, with your friends, mm. when it is safe to meet up with friends. 
Um, I think one thing that we need to learn is to adapt. I have seen on Twitter that a few photographers are learning um, 3D modeling. So there's software where you can make 3D renders and it's like a really complex thing that I don't know how to explain, but for example, it's all digital. So, and it's worth a lot of money. So if you know Gibson Hazard, he does a lot of like 3D renders in his videos. A lot of it is he makes, you know, from scratch. Um, and I think if you can tap into that, it's not exact photography, it's more digital, but it's about expanding your skill set. And if you can do that, that is a lot of money in 3D modeling, rendering. You can do it for properties, the amount of properties that need 3D renders. Um, it may sound boring, but I think all skills, all, if you have it in a fun mindset, all skills would be fun. Um, you know, you could render out a 3D live set. You know, you can. I know Travis Scott did a whole like Astro World I thing, know. which I, I don't. You know what I mean? Yes. Like with um that game that I've forgotten the uh, name Fortnite? of. Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, totally. So there's there's so much that is so... is happening, and I think it's definitely going. It's going digital. I completely agree. I mean, another reason why I've set my Sunday streams are um, my creative challenge Sunday. So I set a challenge for all of the people that show up in the stream. I love that. Um, for the following mm -hmm. Sunday, they've got a week to complete the challenge and then they submit their photographs. And on Sunday, we just go through and look at what they've submitted. And it's like the most inspiring day, just looking at all these people that show up to these streams and what they're creating right now mm -hmm. um, and you know each week it's yeah. a different type of photography um, and it, it really is to uh, a to keep photographers shooting and inspired but to, to hone your skills in a completely different area that maybe you haven't thought about shooting before yeah. I think that's um, it's such great advice to um, use the time to you know pick up a new skill uh, hey Benjamin, yeah, I know I just saw, I saw that you just got here. Um, uh, you can watch it back. Yes, it'll be it'll be up on my page when we finish as well. I mean, sorry, but at this, I just want to say at the same time, um, you don't have to create. I think it's really really important to say that yes. you do not. You can literally spend the past three months <laughs> just watching Netflix, and <laughs> that's fine because that that's exactly what I have done. I thought I would spend the month learning new skills and creating, but I've successfully finished like 18 seasons of like various you know um programs i'm really proud of that i'm so proud that i've done that because for me it's just about taking a rest you know kind of just not doing what you normally do i've started painting cooking awesome. um having other outlets yeah so just remember you don't have to be creating every day yeah I, I completely agree I've definitely had days where I just definitely don't want to do anything at all and then definitely uh, you know other day like kind of just really being intuitive and, and gone with what my body feels and, and my, my mind is feeling like and if I don't feel like creating then just not forcing it um, yeah, but also sure. you know being connected to this really great community that we have here keeps me really inspired to um, one, yeah, and yeah. I think it's really great what you're doing yeah. or bring, with the challenges. I think that that's also one thing where people who don't have the initiative to do something and you're able to give them like, okay, this week do a raw challenge or like, yeah, you know, little, do this, do that. Just a little um, prod, here we yeah, go. <laughs> um, the, really but the other thing too is, is that I love bringing people on like you as well because like I said earlier, all our paths are so different and we've all connected through this world of music photography but um there's not yeah. one of us that has had a similar path into it it's all like yeah. oh i just whatever this you know it's all it's everyone is so different so i love getting people on such as yourself so it can inspire you know if what you know whatever somebody's journey is hopefully it inspires someone you know mm -hmm. and, we, and i've got maggie on next week which i'm really stoked about um, she'll be on next oh, thursday so yeah um aaron's got a question yeah. um if we've got time we do have time as long as um ish has got time yeah. uh i'm good how do you choose shooting locations do you have a list or keep a map that's a good question i've got a little map that's a good in question. my head <laughs> yeah um so good advice is um if you go on my portrait section they should be uploaded mm -hmm. what i do is for I do a shoot, I'll make a mood board. So I'll ask the client 
um, can you give me a mood board so I can feed off that? Or I'll just make it from scratch and I'll kind of gauge their audience, gauge their aesthetic. And basically in London, we have a lot of videos of like Instagrammable locations and, you know, where to shoot. So I'll do research. Um, but then also, it sounds really long. I'll go on Google Maps and go on Street View. And if I know an area, for example, Notting Hill is quite posh. It's quite, you know, white houses, um, prim and proper. If the client is similar to that, I'll go to Notting Hill on Google Maps, go on Street View and walk around because you can do that from home. Oh my God, that's like um, Don't, don't like, Fuck With Cats where they went through the, I don't know if you've seen that documentary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that documentary. Yes. But it's a really good way to like find locations on the street um, and then just write down street names. Great But advice. most of the time I'm on the I love bus. It. Yeah, I'm on the bus and you just pass mm. somewhere. So I'll just like take a picture of anything because your iPhone saves the location on every picture if you've enabled it. So then I'll go back to that picture and look at the location oh, wow. and then write that down. Great. Um, but also, uh, for example, the first photo on my website was portraits. So this location I found because it's basically a place in London that people don't really know of. It's called Lead Mill Market. And the artist was a bit like, kind of music was a bit like old school, like old fashioned. So I kind of wanted like a proper traditional, like London architectural kind of like market space and I literally just googled like London marketplaces cool architecture oh, wow. like stuff that relates to the artist and found this place called like Leadville it's Market so perfect. and found a, yeah and found like I found like a pub and like stuff and the artist was like I have never found a more perfect location that matches what I want to represent myself oh, as I love that and from from that we literally got like a, a really close relationship and like every time he comes to the uk we we shoot and we did like a random shoot in this i haven't released them but oh my god my favorite location ever it's like this hotel in king's cross and you're low-key not meant to shoot there but we did and it's like got a grand staircase oh. chandeliers and um we haven't released it but it will be out there gorilla um, shoots are my so favorite have... the ones where you're not meant to shoot they're my absolute favorite especially if you yeah. just quickly sneak in a little um yeah that, little that's what i always say if they're gonna kick you out they kick you out but at least you try <laughs> um emma's emma's yeah. just said love hearing the stories behind the photographs yeah that's so cool um i can't I, we did that i went to america and shot a whole um basically campaign for a clothing label that was from Australia, but we had an American model and we did it all like guerrilla style. So we literally just jumped out of cars and like we scouted the location the day before I, and then went, yeah. and then we, the model was like, you like are not allowed to do this in LA. Like you need permits, you need like, and we're just like, what? Like we don't, in Australia, we just jump out and shoot cause you are allowed to shoot anywhere. But in LA, apparently you need permits. We were like finding buildings just going to the top that have a sick rooftop we're like yeah sweet let's just shoot here and the model was like i we've i've never done this before like we don't do this here <laughs> so i love shoots like that yeah it's just like that, random that, i agree as well and i also will say like if you're lucky enough you're shooting a new place try and find local photographers but, like when i was in new york mm. um i found this photographer who lives in new jersey and we literally just drove around and he showed me a location where his uncle used to own this convenience store and we shot there. And then we went to an abandoned house and I was like, this is so American, like going to an abandoned <laughs> house and shoot it there. And then we found this junkyard which has some old cars Sick. and we shot there. And it's like photos, me on my own, would never have gotten without yes. his guidance and his image. So oh, definitely that's, people... Well. That's great advice. Um, Benjamin's just asked a really good question as well. Has a situation occurred where during the process of the shoot or near the end of the editing, has the artist changed what they want? I'll, <laughs> I'll let you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Um, it's definitely happened. I literally had a recent, well, a big tour that um, was like create. When you, when you do agree on a job, you should agree on the outcome. Um, and sometimes they will. So, for example, they'll be like, okay, we want this kind of style, we want this, and we want that. Because they have set that, you deliver that. If they want it completely changed, then they need to pay. They need to pay another fee. But if it's a question of you have creative freedom, 
you can do what you want and they don't outline anything mm. then you by default are allowing me to create whatever I want and if you do not like that I can create one re-edit that is similar just tweaked but if you want it completely different sorry my rule is you have to pay um, an extra fee just an editing fee so time it will take me to edit I have had that um, I've had it in a big big bulk um, five video thing that I had had to edit oh each gosh. video five times oh um, and it literally like caused me so much stress and it was a case of like I was arguing like yo you hired me to do what I want and I was telling me I can't do this and it was a case of them like saying okay but we're not going to pay you more and I was just like oh my god I'm such a bitch. like oh my god I can't um, and it was it was a back and forth, and I, we were just were like going back and forth, and then it got to the point where I was just like, okay, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do one re-edit and send that, and then if you don't like it, I'm not re-editing. Like I'm just not. Yeah. Um, I think it's definitely important to compromise. Yes. But if they've changed their mind, I'm sorry, that is your problem mm. because I've done the work. Yeah, a, co a complete change of mind is pretty rare. Like, um, I definitely sometimes during the I, on on shoots, like I have, um, like Isha was mentioning, like there's mood boards and and you you know you you get on the same page before. But sometimes something can happen mid shoot, or you get inspired by something. Something you, sometimes you just want to try something, or sometimes the artist has said, "Hey, let's just try this." Like I. I'm really flexible in that situation. Like I'm not like, oh no, that wasn't in the mood board, so we're not going to shoot it. Um, so you know, you would try yeah, yeah, no, you'd be flexible right. and stuff. But if it was afterwards, that is pretty rare. I've only had it's probably only happened a couple of times, and I try to be as accommodating as possible um, without mm -hmm. being completely walked over, like you said. Like there is a you know, there's a point where you're just like, this is you know there's some there's some people that are just like would never be happy um I, it's very 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 rare that i've had that and usually with those people like the one or two instances that i can think it's been like an intern like something it's an issue that is with themselves or how the way like they look and, and you won't ever be able to fix that if that makes sense rather yeah. than the editing process or the con you know concept or something like that it's something in their psychology that sometimes yeah. sometimes you get one of those people and you're just like oh you just you just don't love yeah. yourself like this is a bigger issue that is that is why that is also a big issue because i think part of a photographer's job is also like slash like you know um spirit guide because like a lot of artists <laughs> are very insecure yeah. and like gas that up and like I found myself like 90% of the time when I'm working with artists is to just like gas them up and be like, oh no, but you're amazing, you look good. And like, you know, keep their levels yes. up because I have found, especially on a tour, it drains you and you don't have time to like, when you are taking photos of people and they're not feeling themselves, it shows, it shows and yeah. you can't edit that out of the mm -hmm. photo. So I think if you have this like bright energy where you're just like, play music and you're like gassing them up and you're taking photos and you're like oh my god yeah do that again that looks so sick and like yes. bring in that energy you are gonna get good photos and you're gonna also make them feel good about themselves which is not an ego thing it's like your photos will look better if Hi. they feel better anybody that's jumped in on any of my live streams that I've, I've done a couple of live streams when i'm shooting and i'm really big on that big on energy big on positive reinforcement big on like gassing them up making sure that they feel like they look beautiful they look awesome in that moment because they will bring that energy back like you said you will be able to tell in the photo yeah. if they're not feeling it. Yeah. like yeah that's um that was a really good question benjamin we've got time um for like one or two more questions if anybody else has anything else i'm just looking at your travel photos here Oh, that's another thing that makes oh, me yeah, feel really I'd... sad because it's like, when the fuck are we going to be able to travel anywhere again? We're in Australia. Do you know so... how far away we are from everything? We're so far oh, away. <laughs> For me, like, I don't know if this is, this is just me being an air sign. <laughs> travel is like the only time that I'm fully ha happy is like when I'm in a car, on a train, on a plane. Yeah. Like, I love planes. I love like being, traveling somewhere. And it's honestly really devastating that it's probably not going to happen for a good year. Mm. I mean, you can travel for business, but personally, unless there's a vaccine, I don't want to risk traveling on a 
16 hour flight yeah. you know, that yeah it's a bit much totally um, it does really suck it does really suck yeah but, i think it specifically you know, sucks for us in i feel like we're just so far away from it we're just massive island in the middle of nowhere yeah. like we, i mean like oh. don't get me wrong there's a lot of places to travel within australia that are really beautiful but yeah 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 can't be too yeah too um selfish aaron has said thank you isha for all your valuable information and for your invaluable work supporting black lives matter so appreciated that's from aaron um you're a legend aaron um brit said that she was supposed to go to thailand for her mum's 50th at the end of september that's not going to happen that's very sad yeah i was meant to be in portugal right now so <laughs> Oh my uh, god, true. the weather would be I, so a one. No, but you know, it's I've done a lot of traveling over the last couple of years, so I just I don't know, take a year out. It's totally fine. Um, yeah, Brit, Brit saying she's so so lucky she timed her Japan trip when she did. She just went to Japan just before all of this okay. shit happened, like quite literally just before it all happened. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Mecca said she was supposed to go to Japan in December. It is yeah well it is what it is um yeah i do thank you for your time thank you so much for coming on i can't wait for this website to go live and share it with everyone and hopefully raise heaps of money for such a a worthy cause we are hundred yeah we 100 percent will like even if one person buys a print it's worth it like (laughs) that's all we need yes it's gonna um Bethan has said I was supposed to have come off a Australia tour, but unfortunately it's been postponed. Yes, I was actually meant to, I was meant to be, like holiday was now, and then I was meant to be in America in July, and then basically touring until oh. April next year. <laughs> it's all been postponed or cancelled. <laughs> that is so oh, no. oh, Ben's got another question, Benjamin. Um, when it comes to touring at the beginning of your career with smaller artists, have travel expenses... Uh, and working them out with bands ever been an issue? Do you want to go first? Um, um, so, uh, no. Okay, so as I explained my first tour, I had to pay for my flight, but when I was in Canada, all accommodation and all travel within there, they were paying for. Like, I wasn't chipping in. They were doing that. Um, obviously, if it's like a, 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 a tour where you have label, then everything should be covered like your travel your flights like everything should be covered so that's when the client thing um i don't think i've ever had an issue if i'm honest like i've even expensed ubers that are like personal trips like mcdonald's at midnight (laughs) but they cover um yeah i don't think i've ever had an issue with that yeah i think it definitely depends on the level of the artist and what you're negotiated at the start um like if it was a re- if it was an entry level artist i probably wouldn't mm-hmm. be expensing yeah. much um i know that like i, I think i've mentioned yeah, before I agree. the first couple of the first the first two tours i did were national tours and everything was paid for but the first international tour i did it was all expense paid but i didn't get paid a fee for that one and then, like, since then, it's, you know, I get paid all the time now. But, like, um, it, it's weighing that up. It's like, what, is it your first opportunity? What, you know, weigh, weigh up all of the options and, um, I guess, don't get too, like, demandy when you're, you're first starting out. And if it's an entry-level artist, understand that it's this huge expense to take somebody on the road. Um, but if it's an artist that's at a level that's, you know, doing stadiums and stuff like that, then you know everybody yeah. everybody's getting paid then and it's totally fine but it's just like it's just working out that what level are they at what can they afford negotiating mm-hmm. what is covered what isn't covered um and also uh, Aisha mentioned before too like they people are loyal so like if you do a favor for them at the start and then you know hopefully it can continue like it's a relationship building thing all of those things um I think are really yeah. important yeah um, some lovely messages here. Um, Britt said, Isha, you're such a wonderful person and your personality and care for others shines through. I love that. Oh, Kenzie you. said, thank you so much for coming in today. Mecca said, this has been so helpful. Aaron has said um, yeah. 100% to Mecca. I completely agree. You're the best. So good to chat to you again. Hopefully next time it's when I'm in thank London you. again on the next tour. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, you're I'm, here. I'm sure that's going to happen. Fingers crossed. I'm scared of Australia. <laughs> what? Maybe, maybe. What do you mean you're scared? I don't know. What are you scared of? I don't know. No. The nature and the people. <laughs> I don't know. What are you scared just, of? That's so funny. I don't know. You know what though? I will. I do want to. Like it is a place I do want to go to. But you can't be scared of the people. <laughs> no, the pe- like the people that are legitimately very lovely people. Like okay. on the surface. I mean, if you live here and it's like, I mean, there's you know historical yeah. oppression and all that kind of shit like you know we can get into that but if you came here as a visitor you'd be like these people it's like canada you'd be like these people are so lovely like it's oh, it's like that you. very very similar okay. to canada okay. but if you're talking about okay. yeah you, you'd be you'd be totally fine and you'd love it it's totally if you're talking about like living here okay. and like the issues like yeah there's some shit you know but if you're visiting it's yeah. fine and don't be scared of like nature because <laughs> you'll come to the cities and you won't even see any of the okay. spiders yeah. or snakes or like you know crazy shit that we've got going on in the wilderness <laughs> and i love animals but i just don't love animals being that close to me <laughs> as in like the spiders and the snakes like i have a rabbit i love animals I've seen your but rabbit, yes. i don't want to die no you won't die i promise <laughs> you you won't die okay. you 100 okay. won't die you're safe trust me you'll it's love it myth, you know just yeah i feel you but it's like you won't you won't even see a spider i don't reckon it's <laughs> oh, okay. i don't okay. reckon it's good. pretty rare like in the city you don't see them that often if you were like in the bush for sure like if i went to see my parents or something i'd see one but yeah okay aaron said a car- uh, kangaroos are fucking terrifying to me kangaroos are like the loveliest i mean they like are. So their, their pouch is a hole in their body. It's just like a little pouch in there, like in a pocket. It's a hole. It's, it's, a, it's a hole. <laughs> I saw it's a, little I, pocket. I saw a video. It's a little pocket. You put your little Joey it's in a, it. It's like, you know, like your back pocket where you put your phone. It's like... <laughs> it's a hole. I saw a video. It, it scared me. They're actually scary animals. I mean, there are scary ones. Like, if you were in, like... Well, where the big, like the big red, like those ones, the big um, boxing kangaroos. There, but I, I don't even think I, I think I've seen one of those once. And you have to go into the central, like into the desert and shit. They're not the ones that you see. Like if you go an hour from here, you'll see some kangaroos, but they're just the little hoppy ones. Like they're cute, cute, and they're not gonna like, okay. they're not gonna hurt you. Okay. <laughs> Aaron, okay, Aaron right, said he saw a video good. of one at someone's window punching and kicking like a 300 pound person yeah i mean like that like i've i've seen one of those kangaroos like once in my entire life so like that's like you don't see them brits just said random useless fact but kangaroos have three vaginas (laughs) there you go oh interesting yeah okay anyway Anyway, we won't well, take okay. up more of your time talking about kangaroos. But long story short, is that you're fine. I got you, girl. Like, it's fine. We're not gonna. We're not gonna get you killed here. I'll take. I'll take. I've got to take you to an equally good eating restaurant, like you took me. So, that's. Oh my god! Yeah, food is the best thing. Yeah, in the world, food so in Melbourne good. is like the best. So, well, I, yeah, I've got you. Um, thank you again. Really appreciate it. Um, Thanks everybody yeah. who showed up in the chat once again. Um, I'm going to post in the Discord group shortly the new link to submit all your photos because Sunday is Creative Challenge Sunday and we're going to go through all of your photos on the stream. And Kenzie, if she's here, Kenzie's going to be helping judge because she won the Creative Challenge last week. So Kenzie's going to jump on the stream and oh, we're going to be judging who is the creative challenge person of the week <laughs> um oh i love that it's very That's cute amazing. you are welcome to join anytime you like too. just come in and pop it on a stream and say what's up you've got an account now so you can pop out pop in <laughs> yeah i have thank you for that yeah i want to obviously thank you to you um obviously credit is due where credit is due i think what you're doing is amazing you're doing this regular thing because it gives people hope it gives people you know something to do um yeah and obviously you've got your cute little dog over there that's um, jetta i can be yeah she's my, oh. she's my baby she's just jumping up <laughs> on me when saying hello to everybody um 
oh yeah everybody is welcome i love these streams they give me life so um yeah i'm i'm stoked yeah. and stoked we, i could introduce everyone to your work as well yeah so thank yeah simply thank you so much to you and um stay safe yes, be safe and all of that all of the things um we will chat to you very soon my love and thanks to everybody in the in the chat everyone, all the jetta emotes of the jetta's got her own um she's got her own emote so when she pops up in the chat they all um they put little <laughs> jetta emotes so that's what's happening at the moment um oh. <laughs> see you to everybody i'll see you on sunday um yeah lovely to see everybody and i'll catch you later bye all right bye, bye. guys